Welcome to uh, today's session, a, a, a topic that I'm uh, very familiar with and uh, one I, I uh, definitely like to talk about and like to execute in the, in the uh, trading markets. High frequency trading. So uh, today we're going to focus on high frequency trading in the Forex and futures markets. Now, when we say high frequency trading, let, let's talk about that. You know, I think we need to define it. There's so many different uh, definitions of higher frequency trading and active trading and scalping, um, lots of different names and terminology out there. But what does it all mean? And what does all mean all mean for you? Typically, when you hear high frequency trading, you're you know you're talking about hundreds and thousands of trades in a day. And um, yeah, true. If I can, but then I think I can't see the chat. Oh no, I can't. You're right. Perfect. How you doing, Drew? Hopefully things are going well for you. And you're seeing the markets better after the, uh, the class we did. Perfect. Good, good, good. Okay. So again, um, high frequency trading typically means, you know, thousands of trades a day by an institution or, uh, you know, or, you know, just all kinds of groups. There's so many, I can't even list them all. <laughs> but um, that's not what I'm talking about here. When I'm talking about higher frequency trading, um, you know, we're all we're going to wrap all this around the core supply and demand concept. In other words, no matter what type of trading you're doing, whether it's very longer term investing or your shortest, you know, smallest time frame high frequency trading, price movement, you know, how and why prices move, where and why prices, you know, move from and to, never changes, never ever ever changes. Okay, it's all about orders, buy orders and sell orders. So whether you're a, a you know big bank or a big trading desk at Goldman Sachs, or you're someone sitting at home, you know, trading in your pajamas, um, it, whoever can spot the orders better is going to come out ahead. Okay, um, I understand. You know, there were, you may have seen that 60 minutes uh, piece the other day on you know kind of the market is rigged. Anybody see that? Anybody see that piece on 60 Minute about a rigged market? Um, yeah, so it was it was interesting, but but the reality is, um, you know, there's nothing new, nothing in that piece. Everything that they talked about has been going on for decades and decades and decades. Okay, I'd say today it's you know that that issue is probably better than it's ever been. Okay, as you know, it's it's about kind of front running, but it's very very. Uh, you know, kind of beating the market maker, so to speak, beating the ECN. Well, you know, years ago, before you had electronic trading, all that front running, front running was going on on the trading floor. Only the spreads were much wider. Okay, you, when, you know, when 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 someone front run you or when you got front ran or you know got paid on the spread or something, it was much much bigger than it is today, right? And it was kind of funny watching that because it's like. This is not, uh, you know, first of all, this is not an issue compared to what it was years ago. Um, anyway, and then at the end of the day, um, you know, what wasn't pointed out was all those higher frequency groups that they're all competing with each other as well. Does everybody understand that? Understand that? Okay. So even a high frequency trading desk, they're one of hundreds or more, right? Everybody's competing with each other. And again, at the end of the day, all that matters is where are the buy orders and where are the sell orders. When we, um, you know, have you ever, how many people would, you know, uh, you know, I'm sure there's people with us today. Okay. I'm sure there with us, there's people with us today that uh, are getting pretty good at the supply demand concept. And maybe in the past you were, you were getting so good at it that your biggest problem was your orders just aren't getting filled. Anybody have that issue? You find great levels, but but your you know price just comes close to your level and then turns and you don't get filled. Anybody have that problem? Yeah. So some of you are are getting are get yeah. So that's that's a good problem to have. Now, how many have adjusted and get in a little bit before the level now? Anybody widen up the level, create a buffer, and, and get in a little bit before that? Yeah. So look at all the people saying yeah to both of these. So what are you actually doing now? Aren't you front running the big money right now? Isn't that what you're doing? You're just front running the big orders. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not doing anything wrong. It's, it's the legal version. 
Okay. Okay. It's, it's no different. That's that's all that's all uh, all you're doing. Anyway, so we want to bring the supply demand concept and the whole concept of real buy, real sell orders down to you know as, as small of a, a window of, of um, you know pictures we can see. You know, how do we get really close to that? Okay. Well, we can do that by uh, the high frequency trading information we're gonna go over today. So let's spend a little time on this with the slides. And then I'll take you into the live markets and show you the CEO, the workspaces that I, you know, look at and use every day. So again, by looking at charts other than time, okay, we can get a different picture of that bank institution supply demand activity. We can look at activity-based charts. Right? And again, we'll focus today on futures and forex. Activity-based charts such as tick charts and, uh, and of course, volume-based charts. So instead of filling the one that's not on here is time. We can use time-based charts, but we want to get smaller than that. We want to get, uh, you know, we want to get as close to the actual orders as we can. And when I'm talking about orders, if you're new to the group, remember, I'm not talking about the candles you see on the screen. Remember, candles that you see on a screen represent filled orders. When trades happen, okay, that becomes, when a trade happens, that's a filled order. And you get a candle on the screen, right? Or a bar or whatever your chart is. What we want to find are unfilled buy and sell orders, which the chart does not show you. Okay. All that matters is unfilled buy and sell orders, significant unfilled buy and sell orders, right? Price levels where supply and demand, in other words, willing supply and demand are very much out of balance. Where's a price level where you have a large amount of unfilled buy orders and hardly any sell orders or no sell orders. And what does that picture look like on a price chart? Well, the, the, the charts you use today don't show you that. You see what I'm saying? So we have to look at price charts that show us filled orders to figure out where the unfilled orders are. Make sense? All right, so let's, uh, let's keep going here. Obviously in uh, spot FX, we're not able to look at volume and that's okay. We can look at uh, we can look at the activity charts. So let me move on here. Again, real quick, there's there's three different types: um, time, volume, and tick. When you look at volume and tick, you're really taking time out of the equation. What that means is, for those that are new, instead of if you look at that one in the middle and the one on the right, the volume and the tick, the candles are no longer filled uh, based on time. So if you look on the left, it's all time based. See the time at the bottom of the chart? 9, 9.15, 9.30, 9.45. Those are one-minute candles. In the middle, you see it's a volume chart. And look at the time on the bottom of the volume chart. 5.44, 8.30, 8.40. It's all different weird times. It's because those candles are opening and closing based on volume. And in that case, volume of 500, as you can see on the chart. So every time volume of 500 trade, you're going to see a candle open and close. And on the right is a tick chart. So there you're talking about trades, right? Trading um, uh, trading activity, not the volume per trade. Okay, so that one's just set on 100. So that's why you see, again, if you look at the times on the bottom of the chart, 12, 13, 14, 18, 21, 25, there's no consistency, 26. Some of those take a minute, you, you know, a few seconds. Well, those will take just a fraction of a second to open and close. Right. But we're still able to apply the core strategy to, uh, yeah, and Chris, we wouldn't we wouldn't use that setting in the uh, S&P, or I wouldn't have you guys, do, and it depends what time, I and mean, you could, but um, you wouldn't want a setting like that at, you know, 9.30 in the morning, New York time. That would never work. I'll explain why in a little bit. Now, so you can see on the chart, we're, we're going to apply the same core strategy. Uh, yeah, Sean, no, I, I don't, you know, banks are not going to be looking at charts. Um, that's not what we're talking about. Okay. Um, pure, you know, we're, we are just talking about pure supply and demand. Remember, a bank or institution that has all the orders ready, right? Their own orders and client orders, they're not making decisions based off a price chart, typically, right? For the most part, they are not making decisions based. Why would you make a decision based off a price chart if you have the orders? Now they've got their own orders, but uh, they don't see other bank orders, but I think you get the point, right? So we're just talking pure supply and demand. Now, OK, 
Okay. And we're not going to, yeah, we're not going to focus too really on one minute charts. I'll get to that in a few minutes. So what's the opportunity here? The opportunity is you've got plenty of people looking at larger time frames. You've got tons of longer term investors out there. You've got plenty of day traders looking at five minute charts and two minute charts and 10 minute charts, right? And applying, you know, similar strategies and similar buy and sell signals. You read all the trading books. Where you don't have a lot of competition on the retail side is here, okay? Um, which is why I spend a lot of my time in the morning making decisions off workspaces I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Okay? I don't have a lot of competition there. I'm finding supply and demand levels that I know most people out there are not seeing. Does that make sense? So, and I don't mind competing with the, uh, you know, the trade desks around the world, high frequency, you know, prop firms. Uh, I don't mind that at all because why they're buying and selling is very different from why I'm buying and selling. And, um, and I'll take supply and demand over anything. Again, it's not, I wouldn't say it's my strategy. That's just, that's how markets work, right? It's just basic buy and sell orders. All right, so um, on the supply demand grid that we produce every day, um, it's, it's, uh, the performance has been very strong. And a lot of what uh, drives that performance are the volume and tick charts that I'm sharing with you here today. So if you're in the Mastermind Community and Online Trading Academy and you get the grid, you're someone that gets the grid every day and, and you see these levels and you don't see them on a time-based chart, it's because um, we probably found them on the volume charts that I'm gonna show you here. So here's a little, uh, here's a chart. Um, I want to show you kind of Euro futures, but let's look at it on a time-based chart first. We can do this on a very small time frame, say one minute chart. And, and I'm going to get to some of the details, okay. right? If you're trading a Euro futures, I know uh, some of you don't trade the futures. Uh, in the Euro, you're making or losing $12.50 a tick. Making and losing twelve dollars and fifty cents a day. In this very short period of time, you, know, you get three decent trading opportunities. Nothing outstanding, but um, again, if we follow and understand the picture that represents where banks have orders to buy and orders to sell, those are the yellow boxes. Okay, um, we can we can buy and sell at those levels when prices return to the area. Now, there's a, there's a there's a number of things I'm going to point out to you. Um, it's going to be the EC, Chris, or um, or 6E will be on, on some platforms. Now, trade count uh, will vary depending on your, your session time for sure. Let's take a look at this one. Right. And when you're trading the Forex futures, uh, the Euro is 1250, the Yen is 1250, Swiss, Pound is 625, Canadian and Aussie are 10. So take a look at the chart. We'll look at one or two more and then we'll get to the live markets. Here we're looking at the S&P on a thousand volume chart. And you can see the times at the bottom again are, are uh, don't make any sense. It's because time has been really taken out of the equation here. But notice every time we have, um, Yeah, spot FX is fine. We just we're just not going to use volume charts. So again, you can see when you have you know supply, we always want to get in on the first pullback. Demand, get in on the first pullback. Supply, supply, you know, demand, supply, get in on the first pullback. But I want to start to get into um, and here's here's one of the trades that I actually took during that session. Okay, just had a supply level here. Prices fell away from level, just short the pullback. Now I'll create a little bit of a buffer, a minimum price point buffer in these, just because now we're really focused on where banks are buying and selling. So um, I'll, I'll definitely create a buffer on these, but uh, what you'll see is when you're doing this type of trading, the levels that work best by far are the ones like, well, if you look over here on the left, the one on the right's fine, but on the left, Notice how much time it takes between when the level was created and when the entry happens. You want that to be very little time. You want the level to be created. Okay, you want the level to be created 
and then price, and then uh, you know that opportunity to meet entry very quickly. Okay, you don't want a lot of time in there. Yeah, so Abby, that's because you're you're dealing with spot four X. So we need to we need to add a little buffer on the front end and a little buffer on the back end. Or if you're trying to do this with you know in very small time frames, you can consider trading the forex futures. So so here, yeah, it's it's not it's not so much about um, so there's there's two things. Yeah, you know, when the level is created, yeah. I want to, you want to see price move away from the level. Obviously, the, the more price moves away from the level, the better, because that, that tells you and opens up your initial profit zone, right? It, it, uh, in other words, if you're shorting, it tells you where the buyers are. If you're buying, it tells you where the sellers are. But for this, um, because you're dealing with such a small, you know, kind of window of, of orders, order flow, the quicker these types of trades meet entry, the better. Yeah, we're going to go over times and symbols and, and all that stuff. And I'll take you to the live markets in just a minute. I'll probably answer all the questions during, uh, during this session. Um, but again, notice these. It's never more than like four or five candles, you know, your entry. So you get an entry. You know, here's maybe five. Here, maybe five or six. You know, here, maybe five. Some of these, two or three. Uh, you know, your best levels, uh, Kasra, you, you're, you know, yeah, you might have a challenge getting filled, but again, that's a, it's a good problem to have. That means, you know what, you're not getting filled because you're competing with banks to buy and sell there, right? That's why, like in this one right here, this, this trade on the right, the short-term income trade here, this uh, high frequency trade, yeah, my proximal line is right here, but I'll, I'll enter just before that. Okay. These charts, yeah, these charts are central time. So John FX is bringing up a good question. What about higher time frame context? Well, that's a, that's a great question. And um, I don't know that it matters too much here. And let me explain why. What matters is, and, and this goes for anything I've ever told you, everything we, anything we've ever talked about with, uh, you know, supply, demand, and core strategy, whether we're doing it for short-term income, uh, long-term wealth, what matters most are two things, and, and, and really there, there's two things at the top, everything else in second. It's fresh levels and profit zones. Okay? If you write those two down and really just focus on that, okay, it's fresh levels and profit zones. Oleg, uh, first three hours of New York session, I would, say, I would say no. I'd say you don't need to do it that long. I would say two hours, an hour before the New York Open and an hour you know, into the day. So 8.30 to 10.30 Eastern will be great. And most of the time you're going to be done by, you know, you'll be done by 10, often by 9.30. Okay. So uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But remember, the two most important things are fresh levels and profit zones. What fresh levels mean is once a level is created, once a level is created, until price comes back to that level, like here on the right, so this level is created here. Here's the entry, the short entry here, but prior to that, this is a fresh level, meaning whatever orders are still sitting here to be sold on the sell side, right? None of them have been filled or had a chance to be filled until this pullback. Understand? Okay. Um, number two. Profit zones. So there we're dealing with what we want to see there is, okay, great. We have a supply level, but how much is price likely to fall from that level? That's just as important of a question. So we want to, we want to look at how far price moved away from the level. Okay. So in this case, uh, the, uh, the 1500 on the, on the right, price moved away from the level this month. So here's the origin of the moving price. goes all the way down to here and then pulls back up to the level for an entry. But this distance down here tells me what, what our, my initial profit zone is, okay? This tells me what my initial profit zone is. So maybe, so once price goes back and meets entry, I now know that my initial zone, my initial profit target, or I should, let me say it this way. I, once that happens, in my mind, I'm thinking I should be safe. I should, 
price should have a pretty easy time going back down to this, this low here, offering maybe you know a little more than one to one. Okay. Now, beyond that, we're gonna have to look to the left and see where uh, demand is. If we look over on the chart on the left, again, notice price in this middle one, I'm just picking this one because it's so it's very clear in the middle. Price drops from that level, goes all the way down to here, and then comes back up for an entry. When it does, we expect it to come back down to here. Of course, our stop is going to be, you know, obviously on the other side of the level, minimum price point. Okay. You don't need a big stop on these at all. Okay. Minimum, minimum price point. Yeah, and if you're new to this whole supply demand concept, make sure you go back and watch some of the recordings or, or uh, some of the webinars, tutorials. Okay. Because when I say supply and demand, I'm not at all talking about support resistance. Those are very different uh, topics. So beyond the initial profit zone, um, a lot of times you'll go beyond the initial profit zone. So here again, price goes all the way. Take a look at this one. Um, Guardian and everybody's, look at the middle one. Price goes all the way down to here, which tells me there can't be any demand until this price or lower, right? Otherwise price wouldn't be able to go down there. So when we short up here, we expect price to come down to here, but what about going lower? Well, when we look to the left, there's just a pivot low here, that's not demand. When we look to the left of that, there's nothing down here. See that, there's no demand down here. So yeah, in this case, you expect it to go lower. That's not all the time, that's not the case all the time, but, but uh, you know, in that case, and in a lot of cases, absolutely. And the kind of the final answer to that question as far as profit zone, when you get in its supply, where is the opposing fresh demand zone? When you get in at supply, where's the opposing fresh demand zone? Make sense? Okay. Let's go into the live market. So here, this, this word copy, this blue bar in the middle of my chart up here, just ignore that. Um, uh, great trade, Simon. I was going to get into that in a few minutes, but let me just kind of give it to you. What kind of risk reward are we looking for with these? Well, I'd like a, I'd like a minimum of one to one. Okay, and often I'll take one to one, one and a half to one, two to one. But the real, the real, real answer is okay. What you want to kind of have in your trading plan? Okay. Uh, you know, make sure the chart is offering you. I would say make sure the chart is offering you three to one. Let's look at one of these levels. Let's see. We had, we had some nice trades come up today in uh, the S&P. Here's one from this morning. Everybody see this one? Uh, nice demand zone here. First pullback. Okay, nice little trading opportunity there. Um, so you want to make sure that the chart is offering you three to one, meaning when you have your fresh demand zone here, let me open this up. All right. Where where's your fresh supply zone above? Well, you have this, or 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 you know, what's your initial zone? So here's the level here, right? Rally, a little bit of basing, a strong rally. Price goes all the way up to here, all the way up to 1879.50. Okay, offering you about about three to one. So the, here's the answer. Here's what you want in your trade, uh, your your uh, trading platform. Something like this. Make sure the chart is offering you three to one, and then take your profits greater than what you know at a minimum of one to one, but less than three to one. Does that make sense? A minimum of one to one, but less than three to one. If the chart's offering you three to one, go for two. All right, I think you get the point with that one. So this area, this level uh, worked out a few times, that's okay. I would have just probably taken up the first time. Uh, you now have other levels showing up here. But uh, oh, that, this one that, that just kind of formed doesn't have a big profit zone yet, so we'll leave that one alone. Let's go check out the Euro. Oh, before I do that, let me, a few more things to talk about on this screen screenshot. And again, I'm trying to give you, you know, this is a whole, 
I deliver a whole high frequency trading class actually to uh, FX people. Um, and uh, I'm trying to give you, a, you know, it's a full two day class. It's a two day class with uh, two more online, you know, live trading sessions. So I'm trying to give you all that in you know, 45 minutes or so here, but um, let's go over these, uh, these settings and why they're these settings. I just put my email address in the chat if you need it. There it is, sidemantradingcabinet.com. Anyway, if you look at the upper left, I've got a 250 volume chart there. I've got a 500 volume chart next to it, a thousand below that, and a 1500 at the bottom here. Okay, I've got a time frame chart over here. I'll, I'll, I'll usually uh, move that one around. And, Here's a level from this morning. Again, when you look at the level and the initial profit zone, it didn't really offer you three to one. Well, it didn't offer you three to one. But if we if we update this now, take a look at what we have. Here's our rally, base rally. And let's make sure that we're being offered here um, three to one. Looks like we are. Okay, so we'll leave this one alone. This entire level, you know, is really that. But because the origin of the move and, and the orders are probably sitting you know, right in here, I don't think you're gonna need that big of a stop, but we'll leave this one here. This is a 1500 volume chart. And we're looking at the S&P, the biggest equity index market in the world. So these settings are appropriate for this market. Now, what I look for, so, so let's say there was no demand anywhere close. You know, this 500 uh, volume chart, you're going to have a little bit of demand in here. Well, let's say that's not there anymore. If the market's rolling over and I see there's room to the downside, you know, I'll watch this 250. And as soon as supply shows up, usually have a, a great trade on your hand. Right? Yeah, Ray, I see your question there. Good question. But again, the answer is, if you're focusing on fresh levels and profit zones, you don't really need to focus on anything else, right? When they, and, and I guess, uh, you know, more directly to your question, if you're, let's say you're very high on the curve. If you're high on the curve, you know, especially in big, big time frames and what have you, the chart's not going to offer you, you know, like five to one on the upside, 10 to one on the upside. You know what I mean? So the whole concept of, fresh levels and profit zones, that all works itself out. That, that's taken care of if you understand how to identify fresh levels, which means you can then identify real profit zones. You know, high on the curve, the chart doesn't offer you 10 to one on the upside, but it offers you like 20 to one on the downside. You know what I mean? Okay. All right, let's leave this one alone for a minute. Uh, price is just kind of turning sideways. And let's... Um, Let's go over to the euro. I don't know if the euro is doing anything. Now, the euro settings, notice we're still looking at volume charts. We're looking at the euro futures here. And um, notice the settings are very different. I really focus on those two charts on top. That's the 100 and the 500. And even that right now is, uh, you know, especially with the uh, euro, that's almost too big, um, you know, this late in the morning. You know, the market's been open an hour. You can bring this 100 share bar chart down to like 25 or something, something really small. Um, it's it's 9.30 here in Chicago, 10.30 in New York. I would never be, uh, I would never be, you know, looking at these charts or trading any of this stuff this late in the day. Usually you're, you're done well before the market opens. Yeah, and if you're looking at spot charts, uh, Francisco, um, I should pull up that whole, we have a whole section of the course on that, I should pull that up, but uh, yeah, your settings are going to be uh, a little different and you're looking at tick charts. No, uh, Forex gal, a share bar chart is not tick bar, they're, they're opposite, right? Ticks means uh, trade count, share bar means volume. Uh, central time, I'd say seven to nine, Paul. Actually, 7.30 to 9.30 is, you know, is fine too. 
Yeah, I mean, you have to make sure you're dealing with somewhat of a liquid market. Can't be like an illiquid market. Euro's just not moving here. Let's go back to the S&P. That'll move. Right. And again, we're past our you know high volume and uh, high high quality trading uh, time of the day. Okay. When you say down the ladder, Joe, you mean um, time frames or or kind of these windows? Um, let me open up this one. Um, market, it depends which market you're talking about, um, uh, Forex Scout. For example, that NASDAQ, I think we, you know, that NASDAQ on the mastermind community grid, um, you know, he had two amazing, just huge moves off uh, levels there. And then, of course, yesterday, if you're on the grid, you got the S&P top uh, in there, too. That was a nice move off that. So prices just look, every day is the same in, in trading. We could be talking at this conversation today or 85 years ago. It's the same conversation. Price is just going to move from where demand is to supply is and back again. And I'm hoping this ES moves out of this range a little bit. Uh, if we get the ES to come down to this level right here, which is really close, it's less than two points away. Okay. Um, it's not really doing, doing much here, so let me pull this right back. Let me try to address some more of your questions here. I have another workspace I can go to also. But this type of trading is great. I mean, you'll you'll get um, you'll get more trading opportunities than you'll know what to do with. Give me a second here. I want to see if I can transfer a, a slide deck over to show you. It's got all the settings on it. Just a second. Yeah, you know, it might, might uh, actually take too long to do. So well, we can get to that next time. Okay. Yeah, NQ is good. Um, TF, Shane, I'd be a little careful there just because it's so low volume, right? All different settings. Now, NQ settings are going to be smaller than S&P settings because of the volume. But these are these are nice uh, nice settings for uh, the S&P. So let's, let's take this. Uh, let's go back around the open here. Let me pull this up. And let's take it back a little bit. I'm going to add some. Let's look back a little more. Here's the uh, so here's the morning. Again, if you're we can look at our 250 chart. Here's that uh, 7:30 time that you're starting to watch. Uh, you know, like I said, I mean, there's just plenty and plenty of opportunities. Um, you didn't have a ton this morning, but you certainly have have them. There's a level. There's a level. There's a level. You know, they tend to come in bunches. Again, the quicker price can come back and meet entry, the better. There's a great one right there. Again, you just need to train your eye to see it. We'll do more sessions on this. Boy, if price, uh, price moves out of this range, we'll get a trade. Um, and, you know, remember, when we when we talk about larger time frame, smaller time frame, and, and you know, the curve and all that, uh, you're, you're watching, remember, the 1,000 and 1,500 chart here on the S&P are going to show you, you know, different opportunities than, you know, your, your tiny little 250. You can look at the higher time frames. You know, we can go and look at the S&P or the NASDAQ on a bigger time frame, but um, you really don't need to. Here we go. So what's happening right now. Okay. So price is just starting to fall in the S&P. We need to go more to open up a profit zone. Uh, we need a little bit more of a drop, and then we'd be, uh, we'd be good shorting a, a rally. So if we come down maybe another uh, half a point, and we'll have some supply there. Again, you can't, um, I was going to say you can't anticipate this stuff, but you actually can and we do. We just, I just don't want to go over it uh, before we kind of cover it on the education side. I don't want to point it out. All right. 
So let me just uh, quick peek over the euro. Still nothing. Um, yeah, of course, the one day we hold a high frequency set and the market doesn't move. <laughs> Yeah, so we can pull up, um, I can pull up a spot, uh, we can pull up a spot chart here, let's do that. Actually, let me pull up my other, um, so this is why you wait. You see how the market's going higher now? That's why we need that initial move. Remember, fresh levels and profit zones. So we wanted the market to come down a little bit more, which would tell us that we have a supply zone up here, okay? It didn't, and that, that requirement kept us out of a potential losing trade, right? So you don't want to kind of jump the gun and uh, anticipate. All right, I want to put this level in here and then we'll we'll switch up the uh, chart. There's that one. Okay, so let's leave that. Let's go over here and let's go look at uh, let's pull up a spot chart. Uh, let me just read back here some questions. Do uh, Wix equal pivot? Uh, typically, yeah, a, a pivot is going to be just you know kind of a big wick. Do you factor in trend? No, absolutely not. And I think we should talk about trend for a minute. Um, and let me go back to that other one. It'll just be easier to explain it. Okay. So, well, I think again, there's a reason why most retail traders are not successful trading the financial markets. There's a reason. They, they get it late, they buy high and sell low. Okay, they, they buy high and sell low, here's why. Um, and it all comes down to trend. You know, how many how many times do you ever have a, a conversation with the word trend in it with a trader and everybody agrees? Have you ever had three three traders talking about trend and all three people agree? No, it doesn't happen because there is no one definition. But, but but the big problem is I think people don't understand the whole point of trend. You're not gonna walk around a big trade desk at a bank or an institution. And everyone's talking about trends. Nobody cares about that. All people care about is, okay, I, I bought this thing in 1880. I want to sell it at 1882. Don't get me wrong. I love the trend, but but here's what the trend means uh, to me. We've got um, you've got supply and demand levels, and in between supply and demand levels, prices move. Right? That's trend. So when we get in, you know, for example, our demand zone this morning, right? when price comes back to that level, what's the next trend likely to be? It's likely to be higher, right? And we're anticipating when price comes into a demand zone, and if the, let, let's say price comes into a demand zone, a fresh demand zone, and the opposing fresh supply level is 10 points higher. Well, you're probably about to have a 10-point uptrend. Trend is great, but we want to be in the trend uh, and get paid. The trend should be where you're getting paid, not where you're making decisions or entering positions. Does that make sense? Okay. Most people, remember, it, uh, and I don't mean to sound too simple when I say this, but when... Uh, um, Well, let me, let me kind of say it this way. You know, most people are taught to wait for a higher high and a higher low and then start buying. That's an uptrend, okay? Right? So, so is, that, is that what most people do? Wait for a higher high and higher low, and then they start buying. So that's what everybody's taught to do. That's, that's the conventional definition of an uptrend. What's wrong with that strategy? Okay, you, you know that when there's, a higher high and a higher low, you're supposed to buy. But here's the problem. Who's going to buy from you? 
Don't, you know, you can't forget the simple basics of how you make money trading. When you buy someone or a lot of people have to buy after you at higher prices or you're not going to make any money. When you sell, a lot of people have to sell after you at lower prices. Okay. So again, and that's what makes the supply demand strategy work so well, which again is, is um, you know, because when price comes back to level, like our demand zone this morning, right? You're buying here. Now you have a series of higher highs and higher lows. We didn't have that, you know, way down here. So now more people are, you know, probably comfortable buying. Exactly, Francisco. That's a great point. He says, by the time you identify like a conventional trend, it's a good time to start looking for an opposing level. Yeah, exactly. So we love the trend. We just want it, you know, the trend is to, just where you get paid. Okay. The trend is just where you get paid. An uptrend just means a lot of people have bought. A downtrend, a lot of people have sold. Okay. Remember, one of the most important parts of your strategy, if not the most important part of your trading strategy, okay, your trading strategy needs to um, offer a clear reason or clear logic, clear edge in how and why someone is going to buy after you at higher prices or sell after you at lower prices. I can't think of anything um, more important in a trading plan. You know, if you read your trading plan or build your trading plan, what needs to be very clear and jump out at you is, okay, if I follow everything in my plan, there's a, there's a lot of people that are going to buy after I buy. There's a lot of people that are going to sell after I sell. What's more important in a trading plan than that? Obviously, you know, managing the risk is, is, uh, is key, but I think you get the point. And I think that's, a, that, that's something that I see a lot of people forget. Okay. You know, I'll sit down with someone and look at their strategy and be like, okay, I, I get what you're trying to do here. Now explain to me clearly why a lot of people are going to buy after your buy signal. Make it very clear to me. Explain to me beyond, a reason, beyond any reasonable doubt why the masses are going to come in and buy after you. Because I don't see that in your trading plan. Does that make sense? All right, so we are getting a little price, a little movement here. Um, notice we're basing here. And we're starting to drop again. So if we're going to wait for a supply level, we, uh, we want to see price from this range. So here's the bottom of this potential level. It's not a level yet, 1882 to a quarter. We'd want to see price come down to 8150. Okay. Uh, would you see how it popped right back up there? Okay. So teeny bit more. Let's, let's see if we can get uh, the SP come down one more tick, one more tick, and then let's have it pop up. And, uh, you know, we, we need to know that we have at least one to one um, on that initial zone. And I want to make sure that the chart's offering me three to one to the opposing fresh level. So I'm going to draw, let me kind of put that in here. Whoops. There's that. And, uh, you know, we, do, we, we don't have a little bit yet. Let's see here. But uh, let's just put these in. So remember the rule. Make sure the chart is offering you three to one from fresh level to fresh level. Remember orders to buy to orders to sell orders. And then take profit uh, no less than one to one, but less than three to one. Yeah, Nick, you know, that's ideal. Okay, that initial move at least. But, but again, don't forget the second part to that. Like make sure that this opposing level is giving you, a, you know, a good three to one. All right. Okay. So we'll leave this one alone. Again, we, we want to, I want to see it come down a little bit more um, before actually calling it an official level. Uh, it hasn't done that yet, but we'll see. We can uh, leave that one alone for right now. And again, if you're going to do this, you're not doing it during the time that we're uh, together here. It's almost 10 o'clock in the morning, Chicago. It's very late. 
you're you're usually done with this, you know, two hours ago. And let's go over to the euro. Nothing. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure this level 80, 50, 80, 50. So it's the same level there. All right. Um, well, let's see here. So I wanted to give you a different perspective on uh, higher frequency trading. Depending on what market you're uh, you're trading and, and looking at, spot FX, futures, what have you, um, you know, you should get plenty of trading opportunities in a very short period of time. Um, you know, th this is moving at like a snail's pace right now compared to what it was like an hour ago. And um, again, it's it's a it's a it's a, um, a type of trading where, in my mind, you don't have a lot of good competition. Right? You don't have a lot of strong competition. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I love it. So there's a lot more information on this. So I just put my email address in the chat again, sideman at tradingacademy.com. So if you have any questions, um, you can shoot me an email and we try to get you more. Let's see. Um, Eastern time. Yeah, those are good times there. All right. Well, have a great day, everybody. And thanks again for your time. And thanks to FX Street for putting this on. It was a great idea. And um, you got some great, great uh, speakers today. Have a great day, everybody.